I was looking through some Pinterest things for ideas for the nature and I found this. Although it was printed off on a white piece of uh, computer paper. Then I took it apart. I mean, I cut it out. Ooh, the stems here flow flat. There we go. I took it and then realized that it was dark halfway. So instead of having to really cut out the whole thing, I took my sheet of paper, folded it down the middle, and just cut half of it out. And then, you know, you have the whole picture here. So I had this really brilliant idea that I wanted to do a leaf. And I didn't want to waste my good rubber on this. I wanted to use something of lesser quality in case I screwed up, and thank goodness I did. I had these big, huge, giant erasers from um, Dollar Tree that are like really honkers. They're huge. And I bought like 10 or 15 of them, I think last year, and ended up using two or three, so I have some left. But I ordered this. This is from Invo Art off of Amazon because I wanted to see what this was like because someone had recommended it to me instead of Speedy Carve that they like this better. Uh, jury's still out for me. I'm not really sure if I like this better than I like the Speedy Carve. Well, it's yet to be determined. Anyway, so I took the cheap eraser from Dollar Tree and I put this, the template that I sized down from this one right here. I really did size it down. It's, uh, I think it's about a two by three. No, three by three. Anyway, it's a small, it, the picture was sized down for a wallet size photo. And then this is what I got. So I cut it out. I cut the stem off because I didn't really want the stem on it. And I folded it in half right down that dark line like I did the other one. Put it on here like this and trace it. Thought, oh, that's really cool. I'll flip it to the other side. I'll do it like this. Uh, you can't do that. <laughs> I filmed and I was so happy. Well, the only side you're going to get of the leaf ever is this side. Because you do this, then where are you going to go? <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but that was really not the smartest thing I ever did. So now I have half a um, sycamore leaf which is lovely. It makes a great stamp. I've stamped it several times and I like the way it looks. So maybe I can use it for an edge piece, you know. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, so now we're going to try this. <laughs> I just scrapped the other video. So I'm going to, oh, where did I, how did I put this on here? I don't remember how I put this thing on here. All right, so let's, Flip it to the other side, make sure all the mess is off of it. So I'm going to take this, and since I wanted a whole leaf, I'm going to trace it with a pencil. Alrighty, so let's get this out of the way. Now, the tools that I, I use, I started with were the um, speedball, you know, the speedball tools. And in the in the handle of it, it has all my um, carving tips. And then you change them out as you need them for different sizes and different jobs. This one is kind of large for what I need. So I have a second one of these. And I also have a set of these that I ordered. I really like these. I think they were about $30. And I use... Oh, I lost my plastic tip. I, I use this one the most. It's the smallest one. It's like... Eh, it's the smallest one in Speedball. It's comparable. But I think these are sharper and they stay... They hold their edge a lot better. You cannot sharpen these. You have to go buy new blades. This says you can sharpen them, but honestly, eh, I don't know. There are other brands out there where you can sharpen them, which are a better brand than this. But I 
you know, it's my step up from the cheap, I'm the less expensive stuff. Let's don't use the word cheap. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to go around, go around my pen drawing and try to make sure when you do this, you go to the outside of the drawing because anytime you go like this, you could stab yourself. And this is the voice of experience speaking because I have cut myself a couple times or jabbed myself. It wasn't a cut, it was a jab. So I made a hole in my hand for a while. So you just go and then angle it off. Let me see, do I need to bring you in? I'm so afraid when I bring you in, I'm going out of camera so many times I've done that in the past and I'm trying to not do that anymore. It's very hard. All right, so I just go around and then turn the rubber. You can put your rubber on some kind of a swiveling thing where it, it turns better, like a turntable. This is good enough for now. And then I just go around and off to the edge so I'm not jabbing myself. And if you take some of the ink with you, no problem because, you know, it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things. What you're doing is you're creating a tunnel all the way around it so that you can carve the rest of it. And then go off the side here. Sometimes you don't get it in deep enough and you can't pick it back out. So you have to kind of nudge with your fingers. All right, so I'm gonna go this way. And some cuts are deeper than others. Everyone holds the tool differently. Some people use wood carving tools or tools that are meant for linoleum. It's just whatever you can afford and whatever you're most comfortable with. I suggest that you start with Speedball first only because it's one of the least expensive choices and it is readily available in places like Amazon, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, AC Moore, all those kind of craft stores is um, it's available in places like that. All right, so I'm going around the corner. So what I do is I make sure I rotate the rubber. It's too hard to go around like this because you'll end up stabbing yourself. All right, so there's this one and just go off the edge. Uh, let's see, we're gonna go this direction. It's kind of hard to hold it this way. Go off this way because it's got a little point there. So let's go off that way. And then all I have to do is this little line right off the edge like that straight. And then it makes the really nice point right there. Okay, have we done this one? Nope. All right, so when you carve, you need to get a scrap piece of paper because you need to test your carve. What I mean by that is once you start getting a good carve on and you think you're to the point where you want to see what it looks like, I would use a scrap piece of paper and ink it up and stamp it. And what'll happen is you'll see what's left over. So you'll see where you need to keep going, where you need to make any adjustments. Some people like all the lines going out to give it kind of that rusted look. Other people want it to be absolutely perfect, don't want any other, any other things sticking up on it.
up. I could do one of two things. I can leave it so it's a solid color. Or I could put veins in it to give it some character. I don't know yet. There you go. See, you can see the difference in the two. There's just a couple more little places on here I need to take care of. And you can see them, like right there, that little piece there, this little piece on the tip here, and then a couple here, and then maybe right up here. But if you don't want to do that sometimes. Now, it's hard to do this with smaller pieces. I always screw them up. So if I do this, I get rid of some of that stuff I really don't want on my stamp. You have to be very careful though. You don't want to overcut because some of these tips are kind of skinny and you still need them to have a little stability when they stamp. Let's see, cut this like a pie wedge here. There you go. And I'm gonna cut this one out. off the bottom. See, I don't have to clean up as much if I cut some of the edges off. You also cut off some of the character of it too from the lines. And some people carve them down to the nth degree. I mean, they really do carve a lot of rubber off the outside edges. I don't always do this. Sometimes I intend for this stuff to have the character on it and I'll leave it on there, but this one I don't want it on there. So there it is. There's my leaf. I'm thinking about putting veins in it, but I gotta let the dog out. Okay guys, I went back and tried to edit my video and discovered that it was a total mess. <laughs> I 
So I'm piecing together parts of it to get the whole concept. But what I did want to do is, I wanted to show you what I did to that second one that I had carved the veins in to go with this one. It was too much color. All I really wanted was the vein. So what I did was I dug it out a little bit more to make more defined lines. And when I did that and I stamped it, this is what it, this is what I got. So now I'm going to take the other one, the solid one, and I'm going to put a color on it so that you can see what it looks like on top of something or maybe underneath something. I don't, I've never done anything like this two color stamp type thing before, so we're going to give it a shot and see how it turns out. May not be exact, but I think it'll probably be close enough for government work. And there we have it. Awesome, huh? That looks cool. Um, not too shabby. I may have to trim off a little bit right here where it goes off the edge. Or move the stamp. Try it a couple more times and move the stamp around. Because remember, I carved this two separate ones. I think I've carved this thing three times now. <laughs> this one was my original screw up. This was a fix to the screw up that didn't go well the first time. So then I made adjustments in it for the second time. And I'm much more pleased with the way it looks now. So now I can use these two stamps to do color on color. Or I can do just the skeleton of the leaf, which is this one. Or I could do a solid color so that I can doodle inside it. And then both of these can be used on a jelly plate. So I like using things that I can use or having things that I can use for more than one project or more than one facet to an art project. I really, really like the way this turned out. I've surprised myself. <laughs> That's a good thing. All right, so that'll be it for my creative year, hashtag my creative year. And the prompt for the month of January is nature. And since my nature here in Texas is uh, mostly brown, <laughs> I decided that carving would represent nature a lot better from here because <laughs> there's nothing green out here right now. Alrighty, so that's it for my creative year. And the prompt again for January is nature. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you watching and try and visit the other people as they post their videos in the month of January. Thanks. Bye.